to the end zone. What a catch! The Kites on touchdown. It's Championship Saturday. Welcome to Macon. Welcome to the GHSA Class A Division I Boys Basketball Final. It is the Mount Vernon Mustangs against the Paideia Pythons inside of the Macon Coliseum. Welcome. I'm Daniel Searle along with Kate Harley, longtime basketball player and knower of the Atlanta basketball scene. We will be bringing you all the action here as Mount Vernon takes on Paideia. And it's sure to be a great game. These two region rivals, they've traded games all season. We'll see who can get the biggest one of the year. And Mount Vernon, they had a big time win in the semifinals. And who's that player to watch for the Mustangs? For Mount Vernon, it's going to be K.J. Garris, number 10, the junior. He's been lighting it up all year. Region Player of the Year, GBCA State Player of the Year for A1 North. He had 30 points against East Lawrence in the Elite Eight. Certainly one to watch. Big time player, and it's a big time stage. Will he deliver? Hey, the numbers say yes, that this is what he does. So that is Mount Vernon and KJ Garrett's well supported though. On the flip side, the Paideia Pythons, they're a little shorter than that Mustangs crew, but they come with energy and they've got some players too. Absolutely, CJ Harper, the 6'2 sophomore, first team all region, game high 26 points. He's already getting D1 offers just as a sophomore, including from Georgia Tech. The Paideia, a very balanced team, but this sophomore leading the way for the Pythons. How about it? So this is Mount Vernon against Paideia, and each team has been preparing for this all season, and especially this last week they've had from Saturday to Saturday to get ready. The keys to the game, Kate, for each team, what are they? For Mount Vernon, it's going to be containing C.J. Harper like we just talked about. He's running the show for Paideia. The biggest thing is just to play loose. We talked to Coach Tarek Maben, and he talked about the importance of just treating it like any other game, having fun out there. For Paideia, they've got to be tougher in the paint. They struggled a little bit uh, in their last matchups in Mount Vernon, so keeping strong in the paint and keeping their composure much like Mount Vernon. You can't think about how it's a state championship. You gotta just play your game. And that composure is also a reference to the last game against the Mustangs where there was a technical foul called and they lost their composure, lost their cool a little bit. And if they can stay calm, play hard, Paide is gonna have a chance, but it's gonna be tough against the much taller Mustangs. It's time here in the Macon Coliseum in the heart of Georgia, the cherry blossom capital of the world to meet our starting lineups for Paideia and for Mount Vernon. We will start with the visiting crew from Mount Vernon, the Mustangs coming out of Sandy Springs. They've won 22 games this season, nine losses. In region, they were eight and one. That one loss to Paideia on a nine game win streak. The clapping Mustangs right here, the lineup is started off by their point guard, number three, Gabe Alterman. He was out for about a month and a half with a, a broken finger, but he is back and he is ready to distribute the basketball, a 5'8 sophomore. Number four, Dennis Scott the third. Let's call him Trey. He can shoot the tray. His dad sure could shoot the tray over at Georgia Tech. He's 6'10. Number five, Xavier Shegog, this guy can ball, heading to West Georgia to play at 6'6". We talked about number 10, K.J. Garris, player of the year in the region and state player of the year in that section. And then finally, number 24, that's Goba, number 24. He's 6'4", and he is going to be bringing all kinds of bits and pieces, including 14 points a game. There's your Mustangs coming out as a five. Saying hi to their announcers next to us, the three officials, and then heading over to talk to Eddie Johnson from Paideia. As we flip over the Paideia Pythons and their starting five. The Pythons over off of Ponce de Leon. Leon, as some of us call it in Atlanta. 
They are ready to go in the state championship game. A momentous occasion for the Pythons and their athletic director, Mike Emery, over there. They come in with 17 wins and 12 losses, nine and two in region. And their starters, number two, Frank Jackson, a 6'3 sophomore. CJ Harper's 11, the 6'2 sophomore we talked about, fills it up. 13, Tristan Mitchell, a freshman, but he played huge, a little assassin on the court. Number 21, David Oglesby Smith, 6'3", mid-range guy, and 22 is Jaden Clay, a 6'4", junior, with a nice stroke. There go the Pythons, that same format of we stay in our huddle, we come out together, we are a unit. Hello to the officials, good sportsmanship, and then saying hi to Coach T on the Mount Vernon side, and we're about ready for action, Kate. Fired up. So fired up. We just came off of an amazing girls championship. Galloway and St. Francis, an overtime thriller. St. Francis pulled out with the win and hoping for the same level of excitement of this one, in this one. All right, the coaches on the Mount Vernon side. Coach T in his seventh season at the helm of Mount Vernon. He's got him in the championship. He wants a shout out for his wife, Sharita, and his three boys, TJ Shamar and Emery. On the other side, and the, the name there, Rory Griffith, that's our old uh, Green Forest coach. So there's Coach T. We'll give him his props. On the other bench, the Paideia Pythons, led by Eddie Johnson. He's coached at a variety of spots across the Metro from Farrell to MLK. Knows what it's like being in a state championship, but the Pythons on his bench, not so much. All right, Macon Coliseum, state championship basketball. Let's do it. And the first tip goes right out of bounds. It will be Paideia basketball. That's number 21, Oglesby Smith set to trigger the inbound. Mount Vernon matched up man to man with good help side defense following their principles there. Ball swings around. A lot of movement's gonna be crucial for the Pythons. Jackson and the ball keeps going side to side. Look at 13, Mitchell, the freshman. Here goes Jackson, up under, step through. It rolls in. Unorthodox but effective from Jackson. How about him? The sophomore already making a mark. Like a lot of this Pythia team, he struggled with injury. But looking good to start this one out. Here's Mount Vernon, their first offensive play. They're looking inside to Shegog. Tipped away. Paideia's gonna hound everybody. They're gonna stretch it and chase you down. Oglesby Smith pushes. There's Clay. Clay going hard, too hard. It's a charge. Still, it's good to see Paideia getting in the paint. That's something they've struggled with against this bigger Mount Vernon team. So a little too strong right there. But if they want to win this one, they have to get inside and get tough looks by the basket. It was an offensive charge, but that's a good sign for Clay going into contact. He had ACL surgery and had to sit out his whole sophomore year, still gaining that confidence in the knee. Didn't look like he was thinking twice that time. The Mustangs on offense. Goba, Robin, skipping. That's Scott, Trey Scott. He's got range from deep. Alterman's the facilitator with the shot clock down to 10 off the double high ball screen. He's got the slip, the pass a little low. That time, unable to grab it is go, she go. And it'll be Paideia basketball with a little pressure. Coming from Mount Vernon. A lot of the teams this week have shown that pressure. Make sure you catch it and then they back off into their half court defense. And Coach Maven said he wants this team to play on their toes and that pressure really gets the energy going. Nice look inside. Play was pressured and fouled. Looks like that foul goes against number four. Trey Scott is first. The first on Mount Vernon in this championship game. Bounce play, nice action by Paideia. Finds Clay underneath, challenging Scott, he is blocked. 
But look at the ball bobbled, and it is Mount Vernon and Alterman in the end that comes away with it. Look at the rip through move, but the defensive rotation. Great stop on the Goba drive by Paidea. Three in transition, no good. Jackson had the look, liked it, took it, didn't get it. Alterman controlling up top. They are not pressuring him. Mustangs content to kind of run down the shot clock here. They find Scott as the release. Scott not ready, but corrals it. Looking for a post up inside. Mount Vernon being patient, but they got to go now. Less than 10 seconds to go. Five on the shot clock and the drive and double clutch by Goba. No good. By Dea, so active defensively, getting touches and grabs on the ball before it gets up. Here we go, offensive side, a little high roll drive that doesn't go for number 11, C.J. Harper. Still a beautiful cut by Harper and Paideya there, using their speed to their advantage. That's what their coach said. Hey, we may not be the biggest, but that means we're quicker. And they showed it there off that high screen, little curl action. Altman thinks about the lob to Garris. Gets it back, nice ball movement. And again, the shot clock down to 10. Patient Mustangs here. Alterman into the paint. Then he provides the kick out for him to shoot the three. Doesn't find the rim. And it will be Paidea basketball. That also would have been a shot clock violation if Mount Vernon had secure an offensive board. Fast start as far as speed goes. Slow start as far as buckets. Still, this crowd loves it, though. I mean, both schools traveled very well, and I've never seen a student section so excited about defense. <laughs> hey, and they've got two great defenses here to watch this afternoon in the Macon Coliseum. Good communication with this young Paideia squad. They like playing together. Find the open guy and hit the open three. How about Oglesby Smith on the skip pass bucket? Paideia by five. And a whistle after the release. The foul will go on Paidea. And hold on, hold on. Take a look here on the Paidea action. The drive, the draw, and the skip pass there for the nice shot, Oglesby Smith. Paidea leads by five. Oglesby Smith so versatile. I mean, he's 6'3", he can get in the paint, but he can also shoot the mid-range. He can shoot the three, just like we saw right there. Does a lot for this Python squad. KJ Garris at the line. The junior, 6'4", averaging 18 plus points per game. He did a good job on that shot earlier of kind of kicking out and drawing the foul, earning himself this trip to the line. First point for Mount Vernon. Garris again. Hits that one, shooting 80% for the season from the free throw line. Look at Paideya using that speed we were just talking about. Just playing with a little bit of pace, trying to catch Mount Vernon off guard. Jackson, there he is, unable to finish. But what a little slice. You saw that drive by Clay and the baseline dive by Jackson. Fun basketball, but no finish. As Coach T looks on. Calmly. Operating inside easily is Goba. Works his way to that charge circle and a little half hook and one. Goba has had a huge year. Only got five points a game last year. Now he's at 15. Coach Maven called him his most improved player. And he's been doing it on the defensive side too. He's also their best defender. And now getting on the board with that and one. Free throws. Serving Mount Vernon well. It's 5-5 with 3.20 to go in the first quarter. Single A Division I Boys Championship in the Macon Coliseum. Alterman out there hounding Mitchell. Mitchell the freshman. Alterman the sophomore. Look at that. Oglesby Smith grabs it with one hand, directs with the other. Shot clock to 10. 
Here goes Mitchell and the kick out to Oglesby Smith. No good offensive tip and board for the Pythons. Great work right there by number 22, Jaden Clay keeping it alive. Great block by Mount Vernon. And they're in transition with Scott Deep. Three, good three, eight, five. The Mustangs up with Dennis Scott the third showing his range. And now Coach T on the sideline fired up. A tray from Trey getting the crowd going gives Mount Vernon the lead. We've got the Mount Vernon student section in their light blue, their Carolina blue behind the basket watching as Goba blocks that one and Alterman takes off for the races. Another one? No. But skying for the rebound is Harper. Woof, he got up. Two minutes to go. And that time the pump fake not effective. A block by Scott. And all the way at the other end. Alterman found Goba who is fouled. Good reach in there by, by Dea. Taking away an easy bucket. The fourth team foul on the Pythons this quarter. The first on CJ Harper. We've got a block fest here in the first quarter. Both Scott and Gobo with two. Still some strong defense, but now Mount Vernon getting the offense going at the free throw line. And a three from this man. He'll get the free throw here. Scott's got four. Another three-point play is what we're seeing from Goba. This time only shooting two. He got fouled in that transition play. That one rolls out. Paideya down four, under two minutes. And they're taking their time here, Harper. Well spread out, these Paideya Pythons looking for driving spaces. The handoff bobbled a little bit. Carpenter, number three, Nico Carpenter into the ball game. That's Sharif Kemp finding Nico Carpenter with the pump fake. Smart play, a little pump fake by Carpenter. He gets two inside. And that's that same curl action at the elbow that we've been seeing Paideya util utilizing their quickness. And here's Mount Vernon slowing it down. If they've got a fast break early, they'll take it. Otherwise, they will take time and find the mismatch opportunities. That's the charge. That was the game plan for the Pythons. Sharif Kemp, the senior, sliding in and taking the charge on Shigog, who is barreling to the rim. Look at that. The help came. He had his space. That charge arc on the court means nothing for this high school game. That is for the college games played here in the Macon Coliseum. Harper eyeing it, seeing it. And you get a little Iverson cut action across comes Oglesby Smith. There goes Harper up high. No good. Great challenge by Shigog. Harper's getting to the basket. Can't quite finish quite yet, but a scorer like him, he's going to get it going soon. And uh, traveling call against Goba. He jab jabbed. No travel there. Then took another little move. Shuffled and violation. So two-point game. Coming up on 30 seconds in the first quarter. 25 on the shot clock. And they have basketball. High pick and roll. Harper working and finding. There is Nico Carpenter swinging it around and Sharif Kemp who is making stuff happen but called for the offensive push off. Kemp took the charge at one end and then committed the offensive foul at the other. Look at that little dip of the shoulder. Good call by the officials. Well, Paideya's offense struggling a little bit right now. They're used to running it through CJ. But Mount Vernon just harassing him. They're putting their best defender on him, Shia Goba, trying to prevent CJ from getting hot. Five seconds. Alterman. And a skip pass. And a look inside. Not in time. And look that time that Mount Vernon, a little unaware of the time on the clock as they inbounded with just over 10 seconds and did not get a shot off. So 
It is the end of the first quarter. Single A Boys Division One, Mount Vernon, nine, Paidea, seven. We'll be right back. The champion. This presentation of the NFHS Network is brought to you by Uber Teen Accounts. Introducing an Uber account for your teenager. Visit uber.com slash teens to learn more. Macon Coliseum for quarter number two of championship boys basketball, Class A Division One. Mount Vernon up two on Paidea, and they get to trigger the ball in. Mustang basketball. It's certainly been a defensive battle so far. Both teams struggling offensively. Paidea 25%, Mount Vernon 33. They've only gotten six shots up so far in this game. They do run the clock down and take their time. There's the play out of the quarter break no good on the alley-oop disrupted by Paidea and they're off to the races but it goes off of Mount Vernon Paidea keeps it got a couple of subs into the game you see number 12 for Paidea in white Hartman there's coach T making sure his crew is set up defensively for the Paidea inbound there's Hartman ball comes around Nice drive by Kemp, trying to challenge Shegog, no go. And the bank shot is good. Mitchell, the freshman, buckets. How about that for Mitchell, a freshman playing in the state championship. He is clearly not scared out there. He is not scared, and Coach Johnson has said that the whole time. This guy is a gamer. Almost picked that time by Kemp. Instead, the bucket rolls in. Mount Vernon, 11. Paidea, nine, but it's now 11 with the bucket by number 13, Mitchell. He will go to the line to shoot one. Look at this. Into traffic, bunt by one, bump by two, and gets two. Coach Johnson called him an assassin, and he's playing like it. Paidea first saw him playing in middle school in eighth grade. He went off in the middle school tournament, averaging 30 points, and he's producing at a similar high level here. He's got five points in the first half. Five of the 12 Paidea points. Mount Vernon, got the two bigs. High ball screen action. Instead, they'll swing it. And now Paidea into a little zone. They keep switching up their defenses. And trying to mess with the Mustangs. It works that time. Jackson pushes and hands it off to Mitchell. They're pausing for a moment and checking in with Coach Eddie Johnson on the far sideline off of your screen. And they've got their one for high. With a ball screen and some looking, some checking, some nothing because the well, Vernon defense closing up tight. Shot clock at seven. Jackson. All the way to the rim, blocked. Another block by Goba. Mount Vernon's defense just stifling right now, keeping them in the game. What a find underneath and a whistle. This will go against Nico Carpenter just getting up off the floor as he challenged. Shegog inside. Got him on the arm there. A lot of ball too as Shegog steps over. Shegog will go to the line to shoot two, down one. Always interesting here, you see no Mount Vernon players here to rebound. They all go and huddle with Coach T during that first free throw. Get their instructions, maybe their defensive assignments, and then they'll come down as you see Goba sliding into that offensive rebounding position, and also KJ Garris. 
number 10 coming in. C.J. Harper back into the game for Paidea. Hartman leaves. Harper yet to score, but we've seen him get hot in a hurry. So Padilla will certainly be looking to him to get some points on the board. Second free throw is good. And another substitution, number 21, Oglesby Smith returns to the game. He had a fast start early. And Paidea bringing the ball up. Tie ball game. The dribble drive, Harper, the pull up, no good. Almost rebounded offensively by Oglesby Smith. Instead, he's able to get it knocked off of Mount Vernon. And Coach T says, wait a sec, that's not our ball. Well, Oglesby Smith, even though he wasn't able to get the offensive rebound, that pressure led to it staying Paidea basketball. Sure did, and here they are in the half court offense. The sideways backwards scoop by Mitchell is good. What a move. Smallest guy on the court, doesn't matter. He is getting in the paint and slicing the Mustangs inside. Paidea hanging around. They lost big last time to Mount Vernon, but they are one of the few that beat the Mustangs this year. And there it is again, a block by Scott as a slicing Mitchell. Thought he had a window, he did not. Trey, skying, stretching, swatting. Scott with his third block so far. Mount Vernon's got six. 29 on the shot clock for Paidea. Ball swings and sings. The pump fake is worthless. Yigong with the swat. Oh my, oh my. We, sounds cheesy, right? But this is truly a block fest by the Mustangs. But Paidea knew this coming in. They knew that they were undersized. Seven blocks, that's a lot for first half, but still Paidea is trying to find ways to get to the basket. Traveling call away from us. Couldn't see the feet that time on Kemp, but the official did and blew the whistle. Similar to the call at the other end with Goba. A little extra shuffle. Little ghost screen action for Scott. Oh, I am stronger than you, but I can't make the shot. Goba ripped it through. Couldn't get the bucket. A lot of dribbling here by Kemp. Going against Alderman and the kick to the corner. Nothing doing for Clay. Patient Pythons right now. There's Kemp again as he jabs one way. He drags his foot. Two turnovers in a row for him. Timeout. The Mustangs and Coach T. They will huddle and talk about their offensive side. How do we get some points on the board here? They only have 12 halfway through the second quarter. Well, they're just playing that patient style of offense, looking for their best shot. But we know they can get some good shots, putting up 104 in the first round against Kusa, and then after that, rolling through Oglethorpe, East Lawrence, and Mount Pisgah. These Mustangs haven't had much trouble during the playoffs, but Paidea is one team this season that has given them trouble. Paidea won the first matchup during the regular season, and then Mount Vernon took the region championship 66-48. So these are two teams that have gone back and forth, two very different styles but they can hang with each other. They are hanging right now in a two-point game in the second quarter. Shooting percentages not that high, but climbing up a little bit. 31 and a bit for Paidea, 33 and a bit for Mount Vernon. We want buckets out here, but the defenses are dominating. So many good sets and actions executed here by the Mustangs. But again, the effectiveness, the buckets, the makes are not happening. And a lot of contact there by Paidea jamming the Mustangs. So it's a foul on the Pythons. And right now, I'd like to see Mount Vernon try to get into the paint. Right now, they have Scott in. He's 6'10", and he's being guarded by Clay, who's 6'4", and Clay is a great defender. When you have six inches of height, you want to try to get that ball inside. You do, but also, and Coach T knows it, 
Scott's style and his favorite spot on the court is outside that three-point line where he is almost equally as effective. And instead you've got K.J. Garris now sizing up, stepping back, knocking down the three. Good choice. The kick and the three ball in the corner. Good, I match you right back. Jaden Clay, the junior. Now these offensives starting to heat up. Back to back threes for Mount Vernon and Paidea. Fun. Alterman, there's your post feed inside to the taller Scott. A uh, whistle and against Mount Vernon. The foul will be called. It looks like on number four, Scott, his second, the second on Mount Vernon in this second quarter. Great defense by Clay right there. Even though we talked about he's undersized, he's a super great defender. Coming back from that AC ill injury, he's been growing his confidence, but now it's really showing all the hard work he put in to get back from that injury. Great work by him. Mitchell crossing the timeline. Just in time, one second to go there. Just uh, sauntering up. Patiently probing, and this time no big inside. And the big man is Clay with the spin move against number 11, Pace Bottoms. Junior picks up the foul. It'll be the third on Mount Vernon. It will be his first. And that guy, Jane Clay, gets another free throw to go. Getting the work done in the paint. Great job by Clay. Another sub there for Mount Vernon, number 12. Montgomery, a sophomore, stepping into the ball game. Simeon Montgomery joining the state championship game. Clay with six points now. Paidea has outscored Mount Vernon 13 to six this quarter. Mustang still looking to get their offense going, but not happening here. And we just talked about the 10 second violation almost for Paidea. Well, guess what? This time the Pythons with that 1 2 1 1 press and trap made the Mustangs turn it over. 10 second violation. Python basketball. Here comes Harper. Five point lead for Paidea. Mitchell, good choice again against the taller Montgomery guarding him with the long reach. Alterman up into Harper, forcing him baseline. There comes the double from Montgomery and a foul called on the floor. The fourth on Mount Vernon. That one goes against Gabe Alterman number three. Good to see Harper taking advantage of the mismatch there. He's got some size. Just looking to get to the hoop. See the ball go in the basket. Cross screen action for Paidea. The catch is by Oglesby Smith. And look how that ball sings all the way to the other side for the three that goes to the other side of the backboard by Jackson. Hello. Couldn't time it right. But there you had Goba flying in. He keeps working, keeps working, keeps working. And instead it is Goba again. Finally, no, off again. Goba with four attempts that don't go. And instead the uh, step through. What? Mitchell at the rim. Razzle and dazzle from the freshman getting these crowds excited. Idea, all excited and a whistle as there's a lot of contact inside between Jackson and Sheegog. But this is the step through and the finish at the rim. Such touch, such speed, such balance. Lovely. The freshman Mitchell putting on his own little show, huh? Absolutely. He's the got the speed, he's got the moves, doing everything right now for Paideya. Mitchell with nine. And the Pythons with seven point lead. The foul was called on Jackson, his second, third on the Pythons. Got Bottoms into the game and he just had the inbounds and has a potential look. Alterman went to the bench. 
High pick and roll action rejected by Garris, who gets to the paint, gets to the bucket. Lead down to five. Minute 20 remaining in the first half. Garris with his nine point. He's really been the only offensive spark for Mount Vernon so far. The three, no good. Snagged by Gobos everywhere on the boards, either end of the floor. Gotta appreciate his game, his passion, his efforts. Adams to Garris. Clock under a minute, shot clock. Down to about 15 seconds here. Look at Garris working. He gets blocked. And a foul called underneath. The board was secured by the Pythons. You had Oglesby Smith and Clay down there. Oglesby Smith doing the dirty work. He's got two blocks so far and battling down low. The sophomore working hard in this state championship and helping maintain this lead for his team. Goba picks up the foul, his first. Fifth on Mount Vernon. We're ticking down to the end of the first half, but any fouls on the floor by the Mustangs will result in two free throws for the Pythons. Oglesby Smith at the line. The first one rattles out. He's a guy that has uh, really provided a lot of athletic bouncy shiftiness, as coach says, to this team. And uh, despite his first sport being baseball, a guy that has a college path and possibly Major League Baseball in his future is getting it done on the basketball court this afternoon here in Macon. There's that one, two, two. Almost tipped. Well broken by Mount Vernon. Bottoms three, doesn't go. A big rebound. Another possession for the Mustangs. Down six, 30 seconds. Beautiful ball movement there, even though they couldn't get the three to drop. Good to see for Mount Vernon. What a drive and attack that time by Garris, earning himself a trip to the free throw line and the fourth team foul on Paidea that will go against Oglesby Smith, his second. Harris, two for two from this spot in this game, breaks the streak and doesn't cut into the lead. 23.9 seconds remaining, first half. It's been a fun one. The shots haven't dropped. The alley-oops have been just a little off, but still intense defenses and two really, really good teams going at it. I mean, the energy on this court is palpable. Both teams giving their all right now, and even though it necessarily isn't showing on the scoreboard, a very competitive game. Rolls in. All right, Paideia basketball in what could be the final possession of this first half. Single A Division I championship. The boys trying to keep up with that overtime game the girls had just before this. Under 10, high pick and roll, Harper. Sees the clock tick down, the lefty shot is blocked. There's time, Harper didn't get it, but neither does Garris. And that brings us to the conclusion of the first half here in Macon. Paidea, 23, Mount Vernon, 18. We will be back with analysis, stats, and highlights here at halftime on the NFHS Network. you doing? Just saving Kevin some money by bundling his home in auto coverage. Nice. I wonder what Kevin's doing. You do your thing. 
We've got you covered. We know how important your pets are at Breda, so when Breda comes inside your home to treat, we don't spray baseboards at Breda. We target cracks and crevices only. We call it the Triple P process, precision placement of product. Can you imagine having pesticides on your baseboards? That's just not safe for you, your family, or your pets. Breda, Breda, no need to be afraid of bugs. It's the Macon Coliseum. It is the site of GHSA Championship Basketball. We're in the final day, and we kicked off with the single A Division I girls and boys. It is halftime here. I'm Daniel Searle along with Kate Harley, Atlanta basketball expert and big time <laughs> basketball player herself. We've enjoyed watching some great hoops where the Galloway girls and the St. Francis girls went to overtime. Fun game, that one. Oh, an amazing game, a repeat overtime battle in the state championship carrying over from last year. Congrats to St. Francis. They really deserve it. They deserved it. They got it done, and a great job by Galloway also. Here are the boys competing, Mount Vernon and Paideia. Talking to Coach Eddie Johnson from Paideia. They got manhandled a little bit in the region tournament. They felt like they were little brother there to the, the big Mount Vernon, a much bigger in size, and they got pushed around physically, and they said, it can't be little bro in this game. Have they responded, Kate? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they've got the lead right now up by five, but it's been more than that. It's been the energy they play with a defense, particularly Oglesby Smith. He's got two blocks, playing fantastic defense on bigger guys, and really the rebounding, too. You expect that Mount Vernon is going to get way more rebounds, offensive boards, but that hasn't been the case, so super impressive job by Paideia. 15 to 13 there on the boards, yeah. Paideia. Also talking about, hey, we're shorter, but we're faster. Have they demonstrated right. that speed? They sure have, getting up and down for a team, Mount Vernon, that likes to take their time and run half-court mm -hmm. offense. Paidea has kept them at bay, but mostly the boards and that energy. So how about Mount Vernon? How do they get it going? They only have 18 points in this first half. Yeah, they're really struggling shooting right now, but they've had some bright spots really for Mount Vernon. It's been K.J. Garris, their MVP, their lead guy. He's got double digits. They've got to look to get more guys involved, try to penetrate the paint if they can, but also look at threes. They've hit a couple of threes, so I think keep trying to find that. Their coach talked about they like opportunistic looks from the three-point line. There you go, and they haven't found those in this first half. We'll be back to see some of those plays from the first half and break down the stats here at the Macon Coliseum. It is GHSA Championship Basketball on the NFHS Network. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. We're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. <laughs> my kid heard that solo. You see my kid? Yeah, Come yeah. on.
participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. What you doing? Just saving Kevin some money by bundling his home in auto coverage. Nice. I wonder what Kevin's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Big time basketball in Macon. Big time basketball in the GHSA championship games. Welcome back to the Macon Coliseum at halftime of Mount Vernon and Paideia. I'm Dan Sir along with Kate Harley, bringing you all the action, and let's look at some of that action from the first half. Well, right here, the freshman, that time dishing it off, number 21, David Oglesby-Smith. Four points for him in the first half. And then right back on the other end, Mount Vernon. It was really back and forth there in that first quarter, low scoring but trading buckets, and how about that three? Dennis Trey Scott. Good half from him. And inside Paideia, craftiness, both the pass and the pump fake, the bucket by Carpenter. And look at the little pull up, bank shot. Ooh, pretty stuff. The youngin, Mitchell, and he does it again. Sliding, slicing, taking a bump, getting two. Well, Lucky 13 was certainly putting on a show in that first half. And then Paideia started getting other guys involved. They're shooting a little better and they were able to stretch that lead out. Off that drive and kick. And this is a nice step back. I got three, and I'm fired up, says Garris. But Paideia, a little dipsy scoopage, stepping, dancing, finishing. And look at that as Garris goes flying back through. So it's halftime here in the Coliseum. Let's take a look at some of the first half stats, Kate, and break down these comparisons between Mount Vernon and Paideia. It's really been an even match so far. Hidea slightly edging out Mount Vernon on that shooting percentage, and that translates on the scoreboard. Five more points, but it's really been even. Both of these teams struggling from the field, but getting quality looks so if they can just get some of those shots to start dropping and then just spreading the love a little bit. Right now for Mount Vernon, K.J. Garris has 10 of their 18 points. they got to get other guys involved. And you talk about them being similar stats. The one that's actually surprising is the similar rebounding stats. Paideia only two behind, 15 to 13 in the game rebound. Paideia incredibly mismatched on height. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They're in there. They're boarding. They're getting after it. Paideia has three offensive rebounds, and they've done a great job on the defensive boards, too, keeping the Mustangs away. So that's a, a surprising stat, if you will. Another one for us to look at that's not on your score is the fast break points. Neither team being that productive there. We saw that little skip and hop by Mitchell. That was about it. Um, same with the bench points. Nobody coming off the bench making much happen there. So we will be back with the second half of this championship game in just moments here at the Macon Coliseum. By day 23, Mount Vernon 18, the NFHS Network. We know how important your pets are at Breda. So when Breda comes inside your home to treat, we don't spray baseboards at Breda. We target cracks and crevices only. We call it the Triple P process, precision placement of product. Can you imagine having pesticides on your baseboards? That's just not safe for you, your family, or your pets. Breda, Breda, no need to be afraid of bugs.
High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Good Coliseum back to big time basketball. Pydan and Mount Vernon have two quarters to sort it all out and see who hoists the state championship trophy. They're one and one this season. Mount Vernon got the last one in the region championship, but Pydan in the lead right now. We'll see who gets it. I think it's going to be really important this quarter to see who comes out with energy. Both teams had energy in that first half, really translated more on the defensive end than offense. But if one of these teams can get a few shots early on, that's going to make a huge difference. Let's see if Mount Vernon can find a way to take advantage of their height inside and also slow down Paidea. Starting fives, the same. Little dribble crossover and kick. This is Jackson. Trying to find some space. He found some contact instead. And a turnover thrown by Clay. Jackson got a knee to the thigh. Is he asking for a sub? Coach Johnson, hey, a lot of contact, ref. Our officials today, Jerome Farrow, his first championship game called Regis Young, his six, and Casey Alexander, a top-notch crew, calling this championship match. Mount Vernon taking their time, and there on the baseline drive, the foul drawn by Goba. Goba so active in the first half. He got to the rim, he got some looks, ended up with four points only on one for six, but opportunities were there. And that's how he starts the second half. Look at him go. And a little sideways turn by Oglesby Smith. Foul. Love to see that aggression from Goba. He's not afraid of contact. He's a black belt in karate. Wait, so what? A black belt in karate and also doing it on the basketball court. Certainly not afraid to get in there, throw some elbows, and get to the basket. Zion Goba. Don't mess with him. Hits that. First free throw. The lead four. Down to three. Paidea with the basketball, looking for their first buckets of the second half. Alterman pounding Mitchell up top. No five second count with the ball live dribble. The hop, the kick, the Jackson three no good. And an over the back will be called on uh, Nico Carpenter number three. Still a solid offensive set from Paidea and that was created by Mitchell getting in the paint. He was so explosive in the first half, had nine points. Now Mount Vernon has to collapse on him when he gets inside and that opens up three point shooters. Paidea is gonna need to hit those threes to keep the floor spread. He got two in the first half, the crucial moments. There was a momentary post up for Scott. Instead, the skip, the drive, and unable to finish the Shigog, and off comes Paidea. Fast transition, Jackson at the rim. A late whistle, but the right whistle. He is fouled. We'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul goes against KJ Harris. Look at that trail man getting to the rim. Gets fouled by Garris. His first, the first on Mount Vernon in the third quarter. Quiet sense, looking to get it going again in here in the third. And shooting free throws, making free throws is a great way to get it going. Although Jackson has remained extremely active in this game, not just bringing the points. Idea so far shooting the free throw well, 75%, now up to 80 with that last one. 
That one won't fall. Jackson goes one for two on that trip. And the Mustangs working their half court offense. We talked about them not having that many shot opportunities and that's because they take their time, they find their big and there goes Keegan to the rim and one. They need to establish that big brother presence right there as the rip through attack, contact finish and one. The West Georgia commit showing his skills right there using his body to get inside and finishes out the three-point play. That lead all the way down to one, Mount Vernon making a run. Six and a half to go in the third. Paidea looking for some offense here. They have one free throw so far in two minutes of action. Dangerous play by Jackson, almost loses it, but it's a Mitchell pump fake, pull up. Good, Silky. Tristan Mitchell, double digits, 11 points, doing it all right now. There's another ripping baseline drive, this time Goba, just like that first play of the third quarter, getting to the hoop. What a look, great shot fake by Mitchell, got his defender in the air, and a nice little pull up, finishing the play. Got his defender flying by, how about that? There's Goba, four for six now at the free throw line with that miss. But he has really established his presence inside and drawing those fouls. Six points for him, four rebounds. Gets another free throw. Back in for Fidea number five, Sharif Kemp, the shooting the senior. Garris with the board and the traveling call. No contact or not enough contact that time for any kind of a foul. Coach T feels differently saying, hey, he had secured the basketball. He was on the floor. No need to call the travel there. Now Mount Vernon picking up full court. There goes Mitchell. And again, just pushing those 10 second limits as they bring it up. Look at CJ Harper directing traffic. Looking for a little horn set with Ball screens on either side. The pull up for the lefty goes long. Mount Vernon down three. Trey with the three. No. Long outlet. Tough catch. Keeps it inbound and then steps on the baseline. That was a tough one for Kemp. The Paideia fans right on top of that play. Not so happy. And that's what this pressure from Mount Vernon does. Even if they're not getting a steal, they're hurrying Paideia up, forcing them to make bad passes like that. Mount Vernon really bringing the energy. Alterman into the paint. He's got a cutting Garris. No go there. Paideia denying all of the rest of the players on Mount Vernon is Alterman ends up on an island. There's inside look for Scott. No good. Ball batted. And it'll be an offensive foul on Trey Scott. Good look by Mount Vernon inside to Scott, though. Seriously, a great look by Goba. Throwing it over the smaller defender. Over to the far side to Scott. Just not able to hang on to it. Scott's got to finish that one there. And then a little bit of frustration leads to the foul. That foul is the third on Scott. The second on Mount Vernon in this quarter. And in for Bidea, number 12, Jimmy Hartman, 6'3", senior. He's looking to spell Jaden Clay for a couple minutes. Bidea, not a deep team. They try to get their breaks when they can. Up three with four and a half to go. Double high ball screen, and Harper trying to go into too much traffic. Alterman pushing. Got a trail, got a goba, got a miss. And again, offensive board unable to finish is Shigog, but finally Scott corrals it and finishes it and cuts the lead to one. All five Mount Vernon players crashing the boards right there, keeping it alive, and Paideia definitely needs a basket right now. Their lead has been whittled down to just one point. Kind of the back and forth, back and forth here. Paideia hanging. How about it? Hartman, no good. Top of the key three. Good look, though. Oh. 
This is what you said at halftime, Kate. Let's see if we can get Scott 610 established inside. Not his style, but they're doing it. They're working it, and it's working. Mount Vernon with the lead as Scott, the turnaround. Jay rolls in in a semi little flex there. Mount Vernon retaking the lead. I love the fast paced tempo they've got going on. Their crowd's getting into it. Things looking good for the Mustangs right now, and really for Paidea. I love to see them get the ball back in C.J. Harper's hands. He's struggling offensively, but he's their best offensive player. He can get going as long as he sees the ball go in the hoop. He seems a little frustrated right now, but I like that horn set they were running. Just get him some open looks so he can see the ball go through the hoop. The Paidea crew likes it also. They're up on the big board here in the Macon Coliseum. Coach Mike Emery has brought down two full buses, two spirit buses of pythons, and they're watching closely as they huddle up. Paidea beating Chatuga handily in that first round, taking on Jasper County. Close looking score, but they were in charge in the quarters. It was Pelham that went down by 15, and then finally they dismantled a really good Savannah team that had a 6'10 player similar here to Scott where they had a game plan that worked to perfection against the tall guy. A lot of teams have underestimated Paidea because of their record 17 and two, but 17 and 12, excuse me, but that 12 is from playing really competitive teams and getting those tough losses against very skilled teams have prepared them for games like this. And they are responding the Pythons against the stacked Mustang squad here. Taking their time, this possession, Mitchell with Nico Carpenter, there's number three, swinging to C.J. Harper, who hasn't gotten it going. Like you mentioned, a little frustrated. Shot clock doesn't matter anymore. Mount Vernon with the ball. Alterman pushing, looking, finding. And inside there is Goba, spending a lot of time in the paint. Too much, three seconds. Good job by Paidea there, getting back after the turnover, setting up on defense, and getting the ball to go the other way. That transition D is going to be crucial both ways, but especially for Paidea because Mount Vernon will run a lot in select occasions, and that often turns the tide of the game. They didn't let him do it that time. Good screen away, trying to get Harper going. This is C.J. Harper, zero points in this game, 0 for 6 for the lefty. 10 seconds, Harper with a lot of dribbling. Five seconds, shot clock ticking, Mitchell finding, scooping, fouled. And I was about to say an amazing de defensive possession there by Mount Vernon. They held out for 34 seconds, and in the last of foul, that'll send Mitchell to the free throw line. So Mitchell will go to the line. The foul is on Garris, his second, third on Mount Vernon here in the third. And similar to Mount Vernon, you see Mitchell lining up with no white Paidea jerseys there for the boards. Philosophically, this can go two ways, Kate, right? Are you saying we know our guy's gonna make the free throws? The other is, let's make sure we're back. What do you prefer? Well, actually, our Westminster team that I got to play on, we did the same thing, particularly when we had great shooters like Stella Charger and Army committed at the free throw line. We say, hey, Stella, you got it, and we would get back on defense. All right, well, didn't work that well this time because it was a one for two for Mitchell. 27-27, 2.22 to go. And what a move, what a scoop, what a finish. He got, that's it, that's how he started the third. Mustangs need him to keep doing that. They're up by two. What an athletic move by Sheegog, elevating over the defense with a beautiful finish on the right side. Yes, and avoiding the charge. And there's the steal. Here comes Mount Vernon. Great D by Kemp, slowing it down. And a whistle inside. Jawing our Sheegog and Harper going at each other right there. And the foul is going to get called. You see them, the little push off by Shegog. Foul is going to get called on Harper, his second. 
fifth on Paideia. And that's what Mount Vernon wants. They're trying to get in C.J. Harper's head. That was one of their keys to the game is shut him down. And so far they've done that. Harper just needs to keep his composure, get open looks. And if he's not getting shots, pass it off to his teammate. We've seen him. He's averaging six assists. So if he can't get to the hoop, then just start dishing. An interesting play there, right? That was a foul that was called on Harper against Shegog. You saw in the replay, Shegog was shoving Harper. Usually the retaliation foul is the one that's called. This time they got the instigator, Harper. So she got shooting two with those five fouls on Paidea in this quarter. He goes one for two from the strike. And here's Harper now right back at it with the ball. Three point game. Minute 45 left in the third. Paidea looking for some buckets, needing some buckets and instead losing the ball. Mount Vernon pushing with Alterman. He's looking, he's finding. He's got a baseline Goba who kicks. Look at Garris, no good. The bounce goes into the hand of Shigog who has been dominant inside. What a board, what a finish. Xavier Shigog with the corral, the rip up, the finishing traffic, yes. That is some grown man basketball going through two defenders, getting the offensive rebound. And just like that, Mount Vernon's up five, hopefully six with this free throw. Two for three at the line so far. Second, the and one is good. Six point lead. Minute 15 in the third, Mount Vernon. Feeling a little better here. Paidea coming back at you. And the Mustang fans getting loud with a defense chant. They got a lot of space that time for CJ Harper to make the drive. He can't finish against the tough Mount Vernon defense. Alterman looking for cutters. Instead it's a skip to Scott. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 50 on the game clock. Now Vernon taking their time. They've done this the whole game. Scott skip and tipped. Tipped with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Good hands by Harper there on the far side. It's one of the hardest passes to make throwing it cross court and Harper anticipated it well. Coach T observing the ball will be inbounded right next to the Mount Vernon bench. And watch their action here with 10 seconds remaining. A little high ball screen for Alterman to feed it up high. Great call by Coach T. The Mustangs with the flush. Third time's the charm on the alley-oop, and woo, he got that crowd fired up. Sure did, and they went to the right guy, Shegog, who has been a beast in this third quarter. He has six points and has taken over in its own way. Look at that. Yes. Nice little pass right at the rim for the finish by Xavier. Got to give credit to Alterman. He hasn't necessarily been scoring, making great passes and great defense too, pulling down some boards and getting some steals on the other end. Very much a facilitator is Alterman and then knows exactly where to throw that ball to these bigs near the rim for the fancy finish. All right, 10 seconds left in the third. Paidea, high ball screen. Can Harper score? No, still held scoreless. A lot of time on the clock. Enough to get this shot off? No. Almost for Goba. So that brings us to the end of the third in the Macon Coliseum. Boys single A, Division One. It is Mount Vernon 35, Paidea 27. Be right back on the NFHS Network. What you doing? Just saving Kevin some money by bundling his home in auto coverage. Nice. I wonder what Kevin's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Customer service is everything in our industry, and one thing our clients love is when they call Breda, they get a live representative. At Breda, you get the attention you need 
and deserve right when you call in. Your appointment gets scheduled right then and there, and you get a specific time, no window of arrival. Our staff are your neighbors. They know what's going on in your community, and they're invested in doing it better. Breda, Breda, no need to be afraid of bugs. It's time for the final quarter of championship basketball for the boys, single A Division One, Mount Vernon with a monster quarter, takes the lead, 27-35 on Paidea. And Paidea struggled mightily to score, Kate. Only four points in that third quarter, and some of those being free throws. Paidea just really struggling to get shots up. That size of Mount Vernon coming into play here in the second half. But plenty of time left for Paidea. Eight minutes down, eight points. We'll see you can do it. So far, it's been Tristan Tristan Mitchell, the freshman, with 12. They're going to need other guys to step up if they want to get this lead back. Eight points ahead is Mount Vernon, and they have the basketball. And this is where the style of play with moving the ball and working the shot clock down will benefit them as long as they take care of the rock. And they do it with Garris attacking. Didn't get the look, but though. Strong Goba says, I got the ball. I'm holding on to this. It's a jump. We'll go to Paidea now on the possession arrow. And there's Paidea's coach, Eddie Johnson. Has really built up this Paidea program over the last four years, bringing some top tier talent to Ponce de Leon. The small Paidea Pythons enjoying success at a new level in boys basketball. And really getting the whole school behind them. It seems like their whole school is here in the student section. Two fan buses to come and support the Pythons. Inside out, three ball doesn't go. Oglesby Smith with a good look. Batted, tipped, and Paidea basketball. Once again, Paidea getting back in transition. Defense getting the stop. That's going to be huge from preventing Mount Vernon from getting easy buckets. They really do need to score, Paidea does. Four points in that third. This guy, number 11, C.J. Harper, scoreless so far in this game, is a crucial cog for them. He's got D1 looks. He's first team all region, almost 1,000 points. Got to give credit to Shia Goba. He's been face guarding him the whole game and doing a very good job at it. That was the plan, take him out of the game. And it will be to the benefit of Mount Vernon. Scott grimacing a little bit as he came down there, but good challenge by Mount Vernon's outstretched long arm defense. The bigs on the elbows. Alterman looks to Scott as the clock winds down, coming up on six to go in the game. Harper pressuring Garris, and Garris finding space and charging. Great D by Harper, and that's what you do when you can't score. What else can you provide your team? Harper doing it defensively. Absolutely, we've seen deflections, we've seen defensive stops like that. Great to see the sophomore finding ways to contribute even though it's not going his way on the offensive end. And Harper, who is son of Phillips, C.J. Harper. Phillips is on the bench as an assistant coach, hoping for his guy to get it going. Phillips Harper, longtime friend, associate, fellow coach of head coach Eddie Johnson. This foul goes against Mount Vernon. It's going to be their second of the quarter. And I love the play right there from Tristan Mitchell. Two possessions ago, he went with the teardrop floater and kind of backed away from it when he felt the pressure coming. That time he went into the defender. Even though the shot didn't fall, he got the foul, and now he has a chance to put two on the board for Pindane. And in comes number 11, Pace Bottoms, the junior, spelling Trey Scott. That foul did go against number four, Scott, his fourth, and that's why he's headed to the bench. And the free throw goes. Important buckets for the Pythons. They need field goals too. Will those come? Down six. Six to go. For Paidea, number one, Baron Bocci entering the game and applying lots of pressure to the point guard. 
And Alderman tries to take him on and draws a foul on the newly entered Bocce. Bocce, a little uh, lockdown defender kind of guy, like you said. Love the way Coach Johnson described him as we look at the, the foul on number one, the first on Paidea, the first on Bocce. He thinks he's 6'10 in his head and plays that way, right? Absolutely love that mentality. That's the kind of energy they need right now. Down six with six minutes to go. They need a guy who's just going to play reckless defense and get key stops. has already done all they can on the defensive side. The rebounds, though, have now changed from a 15-13 at the half. Mount Vernon dominating in this third quarter. The total rebounds, 28 for the Mustangs, 17 for Paidea. So... And a big part of that, Paide just isn't hitting shots. So, yes, there's more opportunities on those defensive rebounds for Mount Vernon. They've also gotten some big second-chance points. Paide now, they just need to find a way to put the ball in the basket. And if not, just try to get some fouls like, um, like they did on the last possession. I'm about to say, look to the big guy inside on this inbounds play. Went right to Shigog and Xavier with the catch and trying to finish, but a foul given by Oglesby Smith, a smart one there. Otherwise, that was an easy two. So now Shigog has to earn it at the line where he is four for six on the day. Another miss. And that is Oglesby Smith's fourth foul. They're gonna need him to close this one out. He's been playing great defense along with four points on the offensive side. A slow scoring affair here in this final quarter. A lot of free throws and stopped play. A lot on the line. The second one for Xavier Shiga. Good. 36 29, seven point game. The Mustangs in control. Paidea looking to break the lid on the bucket. C.J. Harper now playing off of the ball a little more. They got him open off the down screen. But he is keyed on completely and unable to score there. Great offensive board by Oglesby Smith. The shot clock has not reset, sits at 14. You can see on his face, C.J. Harper is frustrated, but he's staying in it. He's tipping the ball, trying to get those offensive rebounds and keeping it alive for the Pythons. Here he comes again. And does he hit the three and open it up? No, no go for Harper. Paidea on defense. High ball screen, Alterman waiting, waiting, waiting. The clock ticking down. Now under five. Nice crossover and a shot for Alterman. His own board and the scoop to, yep, there's Xavier. Catch, finish, and one. What a play by Shegog, but got to give some credit to Alterman. He created that play with a nice behind the back, taking it to the rack, and then got his own rebound, one of the hardest things to do in basketball. Shot doesn't drop, doesn't matter. He's going to get it back and set up a three-point play. And right after that, you've got Garris, who came bouncing over to celebrate. Yeah, I see you, Gabe. Getting it done. And the free throw good, and the lead growing. It's 10 for Mount Vernon. Paidea stuck at 29. Remember, they had 23 at the half, so only six points. Mitchell breaks it. There's a bucket for the Pythons. What a move by Mitchell, single-handedly keeping this team in it on the offensive end. Mitchell has 14 for Paidea. They need him to be scoring with Harper struggling on the offensive side. There's Goba. Goba barreling and spinning. Doesn't finish, but will go to the free throw line. Goba has spent a lot of time there shooting seven free throws in this game, getting two more, but oh, look at Mitchell. Beautiful take, undersized guard, doesn't matter. He's taking it to the rack every time. That freshman is getting it done. Initially a big defender here carrying the offensive load as Oglesby Smith heads to the bench. And that was his fifth 
foul. So Ogilvy Smith is done for the night. A huge loss for the Pythons. We're gonna need some other guys to step up and fill that hole. Four minutes left to go. And the sophomore, 6'3", Oglesby Smith, heads to the bench for good. Good news with him is he's got a couple more years to go. He's a big baseball guy, so despite that. All right, timeout. Full timeout here. Ten-point lead for Mount Vernon. 4.17 remaining. And... I'll give you one answer, Mount Vernon. They control the tempo, they take the time off the clock with their offensive sets, so they're in a good place there. Paideia, what do they need to do? I feel like they've tried different looks, just things aren't working. In my opinion, I think get it to the rack, because even if it doesn't go in, you're gonna get a foul. Mount Vernon has been fouling a lot, and Paideia's been shooting free throws well, 70% at the line so far. But now's the time, you just have to lock in. All the missed shots, all the bad plays before, you have to flush it with four minutes left in the state championship. You have to play each play like it's your last one. It sure is, because these will be the last plays. The Paideia fans looking on. What they want is for this team here in the huddle with Coach Eddie Johnson to make shots. That's where the struggle has been. Paideia shooting 30% on the game. It's been a struggle this quarter and the third to make shots, they're two for, two for 11 in the second half. And this guy, Doba, has been strong and dominant in the paint along with his buddy Xavier Shigog, the 6'6 senior, number five for Mount Vernon. So Paideia, get to the rack, says Kate Harley. And either buckets or fouls, if you can score with the clock stopped, it's always a good thing when you're down and trying to climb back in. There's the curl to CJ, the kick, the three ball, no good by Clay. Big play execution, no bucket, and the reach in foul on Harper. Almost got the touch on the ball, but it's very hard to strip Alterman the fifth team foul on Paideia, so the Mustangs will be shooting from here on out. And the third on Harper. Here goes Alterman, stepping to the line. Free throw shooting this year for him about 70%. Hasn't gotten that many opportunities because he's the one passing the ball, but that stroke looks good. Alterman, he's been playing almost the whole game and really doing it all. He's just been controlling the pace for this team, setting up plays. Only a sophomore, but playing like a veteran point guard. Coach calls him the heartbeat of the team, right? And they missed him for about a month and a half this year where he was uh, had the injured thumb and could not play. He was trying to do the same action from the sideline. A little bit of a struggle there. So it's good to have him on the court. Made one of two free throws. C.J. Harper. The Pythons moving the ball. Jackson with the look. He's back into the game, ready to go. Mitchell kicks and finds the ball singing. Clay tries to toss it up after he lost his footing. In front of the rim with no offensive rebounders for Paideia. 3.30 to go, 11-point lead, Mount Vernon. High post action, look at the rip go. Powerful is Xavier Shegog at the rim. And a whistle. Shegog has been unstoppable in this second half. He's got 15 points. The senior, the coach described how he does the dirty work doing it right there. They aren't easy baskets, but really helping his team elevate here. Up 13 with three minutes to go. The foul was on number 12, Montgomery into the game. And there goes CJ Harper, he releases it in the swat. Montgomery from one into the other, gets the block on the slicing clay. Good look by Harper. Good dive here by Clay, but what? Get out, says Montgomery. Nine blocks and almost another for Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon's length and size has, in the second half, started to take control. This one is a foul, it goes on Shegog. 
Smart play by Jackson there. He anticipated the block that time, did a nice shot fake, and then on the way down, he went into the defender to create contact. So Jackson will shoot two. We talked about scoring with the clock stopped. Important for Paidea. Got to make those free throws. Jackson now with four. Two for three from the free throw spot. Substitutions. Hartman, sorry, Clay leaves for Paidea. Into the game is number 15, Reggie Mormon, just off your screen. Second shot good for Jackson. Important free throws. 11 point game with three and a bit. Paidea matching up, stepping up as Jackson heads out. Got Kemp into the game, number five. And the press is on. Alterman, hounded by Mitchell, and the trap comes. Well executed release by Mount Vernon. They hit the middle, they've got cutters, and here goes Shegog into the paint. The kick, and taking their time, the Mustangs. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Alterman, five on the clock. Finds a way in, the scoop no good, and a late whistle will be an over the back offensive foul on Mount Vernon. That one goes on Montgomery, who's just been in the game and has been extremely active with a couple of fouls and a massive block, making some stuff happen. Very, great job by Alterman there, using the clock, winding it down, even though he had lots of pressure, handled that ball well, had that basketball on a string. But that foul is gonna send Mitchell to the free throw line, and that's the last thing Mount Vernon wants right now. Like we've talked about, Paidea able to get points without taking any time off the clock. 15 foul on Mount Vernon, so any on the floor violations will be two shots for the Pythons. Same going the other way, and that one rolls out for Kemp. Kemp player who has hit some big shots for the Pythons over the course of this season and especially in the playoff run with Rabin County game among others. Second free throw good. It's a 10 point game with 235 and Trey Scott returns to the game. There he is catching the ball. Easy release to Alterman. Mitchell up on him. Time ticking, not in Paidea's favor. The middle release. Rip go, quadruple team to steal. Pythons off to the races. CJ Harper dishes Mitchell, tries to go against Scott and cannot. The 10th block by Mount Vernon. Oh gracious me. A quick one, no. Scott finds the timing. And that's just really hard for a 5'10 going up against a 6'10 right there, Kate. Yeah, I appreciate Harper's vision, but I'd really like him to see to see him go up with it right there, dishing the ball to a smaller guy. I think Harper right now just struggling with his own shots and trying to get it to others. And a moving screen called on by Dea. Jackson said, look, I was just standing there. I wasn't moving, Mr. Referee, please. And take a look there at the bottom of your screen. A little bit of movement, questionable call that time at this point in the game based on all the contact that we've had so far. You saw Jackson make a little bit of a move but it did not impede the progress of the defender right there. And guess what? Fifth foul on Jackson on a moving screen call with two minutes to go in the game. Wow. Jackson, so much effort. Great game by him. Shooting percentage just like his team, not so great, but five important points and so active. Yeah, he had the first points of the game and he really was present throughout this whole thing and just a frustrating way to go out. Two Paidea Pythons on the bench with five. Carpenter also has four. Mount Vernon up 10. Nice back door by Garris. Scott with the release. Garris attacking, hanging, blocked. Here comes Mitchell. Mitchell finds the trailing old release bit. Clay, Clay 
misses it. And I said last time I wanted Harper to go up with it on a fast break. Same thing with Mitchell that time. Hey! Oh, my goodness. And this is the fun that Mount Vernon has playing together. Wow. Skying high. Shia Goba receives from Alterman. They do this well together. Flush it. 12 point lead, a minute 12. Harper, yes, finally, and one. CJ Harper. It took till the end of the first court, fourth quarter for him to finally find the rim. Look at Harper. Crossover, contact, float, finish. I love to see that aggressive play from Harper. I know he's been frustrated with his performance today, but he's still battling and able to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Hopefully it's not a little too late here. If he can get going. Pythons need him. The trap comes. Alterman calm and collected. Timeout, Mount Vernon. A good call by Mount Vernon and Coach Maven. Pidea is going to come out with all the pressure they have left because they really need a steal down by nine with about a minute left. They don't have time to let Mount Vernon run the clock down and even less make a shot. And Mount Vernon, 25 on the shot clock, a minute four leading in this game. They are in charge and starting to feel the edge of possibly winning the state championship here. But you gotta stay under control. This was under control. The oop to the alley down. What a combo from Gabe Alterman to Chayagoba on the finish. Mitchell, the freshman, spectacular performance in his first showing in the state championship. A very bright future for Mich Mitchell. He's got three more years in this program along with some other younger guys. Jaden Clay coming back next year. David Oglesby Smith, only a sophomore. Padilla has got a bright future, but trying to bring this one back right now. Keyed up is Kemp, all in to Garris. Shot clock down to 10 seconds, Alterman knows it. The pass inside, Scott trying to find his buddy Shegog, tipped out. Off of Paideia, five seconds, 45 on the clock. Sharif came just all over the court, guarding the point guard, and then somehow made it down to the baseline to hit that one out of bounds. Look for a toss at the rim here. Almost. And Paidea, got to go quick. Can they go too quick and throw it out of bounds? 39 seconds to go in this nine-point game. Coach Eddie Johnson has worked miracles here for the Paidea Pythons in the state championship. Such an important visit here for them. Scott keeps the ball high as the Pythons hop around looking to get it. And at this point, it looks like the end of the road for Paidea. Foul is on Harper, his fourth. So free throws coming up here with 31 seconds remaining. That is Garris who had a monster first half and kept Mount Vernon going. And Coach T recognizes that, applauding as the smiles are creeping into the faces of the Mount Vernon bench. Garris had over half of Mount Vernon's points in that first half. He's made an impact all game and now some free throws. Icing on the cake for what seems like it's gonna be a Mount Vernon win in just a few moments. Can't sink him though. Neither goes and Padea pushing. Harper all the way, fouled and the wild shot. All of those shots that didn't go in until this final minute of the game, falling for C.J. Harper, another and one. Oh my goodness, C.J. Harper, a circus shot. Circus, no joke, look at that. Spin sideways, release good. C.J. Harper showing those flashes of brilliance that didn't pop up earlier. Hits that one and 
Hey, it's a six point game, 25 seconds. Don't go away. Scott fouled immediately by Kemp. Second on Kemp, and now Scott and everybody will migrate to the other end to shoot two. Scott, a 73% free throw shooter, but really only needs one right now. That would get the lead to seven, make it a three possession game and make it really tough for the Pythons. Scott's first trip to the free throw line in this game. Pretty smooth stroke right there from a guy who can shoot the three and has uh, some good DNA shooting strands there. Going back to his dad, Dennis Scott, yellow jacket and NBA player. Here comes CJ again. Pulls from three, no go. Eight point game, 15 seconds. Looks like Paideia will not foul. We do have a whistle. It is a timeout, Mount Vernon. And the hope here is let's get our subs in. Let's recognize our starters and especially our seniors. The Mount Vernon faithful, quite happy and pleased. Heading out for the Mount Vernon Mustangs. Going to the bench, that senior Trey Scott. The senior Xavier Shigog, the senior Chai Goba. They've all had monster games today and well-deserved recognition on the Mustang sideline. Let's do a little dance, says Garris, just a junior over there with his friends on the bench and a massive hug there for Shigog from the assistant coaching staff at Mount Vernon. You got Coach Richie, Coach White, Coach Oliver. Coach Johnson on the Paideia sideline. Hands clasped behind his back. We got a lot to be proud of. And now some seniors checking into the game for Mount Vernon. Harris, Easton Singh, Cole Carroll, and Drew Lactoen. How about that? As the clock expires, Mount Vernon Mustang State Champions, GHSA Single A Division One. The hug, the hop, the party. Parents and fans in the community thrilled by the Mount Vernon win. Kate, it was in doubt for a moment there. They struggled in the first half, couldn't find the bucket. And here they are, state champions. What a game by Mount Vernon, particularly that second half. They only had 18 in the first half and scored 30 in the second. And it was really a team effort. Xavier Shiga got hot, Trey Scott. Shia Goba, all around great play by the Mustangs, but got to give credit to this Paideia squad. They battle to the end. I mean, those and ones by C.J. Harper. And our player of the game, Xavier Shigog from Mount Vernon. Uber Teen Accounts, player of the game, and this guy really got it done. That's how they started the second half, making sure he got touches. Ended up with 18 points, seven rebounds, a lot of trips to the free throw line, and just a dominance inside in the paint establishing himself and his team and leading them to this win, 48-40, state champs. And a couple of blocks to go along with those numbers too, a really all around fantastic performance by the senior. And by the whole Mustangs team, but congratulations as you were saying to the Paideia Pythons. It is a special time for them, disappointing right now, but state championship game, they are the runner ups. They have battled all the way to this floor in Macon. They will look back proudly. They should look back proudly on this moment. And How it's such a young team. They have such a bright future. Frank Jackson, the sophomore. Tristan Mitchell, the freshman. He went crazy tonight. David Oglesby Smith, the sophomore. And of course, CJ Harper, the sophomore. So keep an eye on this Paideia squad. I have a feeling they're gonna be back here soon. There's a good chance they are. And this crew, they're losing a couple big seniors, but also some youngins with some talent. The Mount Vernon Mustangs, your 2024 GHSA Single A Division I Boys State Champions. Congratulations to the Mustangs. They are enjoying the moment. How about it? So 
That will be it from Macon. It is the end of the morning session. Lots more to come here. Congratulations, Paideia, runner-ups. Mount Vernon, winners and state champs for our entire crew. Justin Coughlin, Ian Russell, Ben Halpern, Stephen Lawler, my partner Kate Harley, I'm Dan Searle. Thanks for watching the NFHS Network.